I'm Sherry. I'm Joe. Welcome back to Smoky Montana. We've had some fires come through in the last couple of weeks and it's um, we're out of the danger zone right now but you never know in the future when you live in the mountains you always have that danger available and you can see with the overcast it actually has affected our solar power and um, you can see the panels behind us and and our intake is a little bit less because of the clouds cover that we got going on. Um, Joe is going to talk about that and he's going to take you in the powerhouse and show you how our system set up. Okay, we'll show you the powerhouse. I know you can't see it right now because it's totally camoed out, but uh, here it is. <laughs> You come in and here's where you have it all set up. We had uh, it's a system from Backwoods Solar. Um, we called them and they helped us with all of our load and everything and help us get the system that worked good for us. And everything comes in through this uh, combiner here and then comes down and uh, goes to this charge controller and then we have this mini magnum panel here that's a lot of the brains of the outfit and then we have a pure sign uh, inverter that changes all of our DC power uh, to AC power so that we can use it in the house uh, you can see here's our batteries we have eight six volt batteries for a 48 volt system and they're a, a flooded battery um, it's important that you keep the water level above the plates that are in there if it gets below the plates it will cause corrosion and shorten the life of the battery it's also important that you use a hydrometer and regularly check each and every one of these cells and and see where they're reading at and when I was taking my readings earlier today, um, most of these batteries are reading around 1280. I had a couple of them that are down around 1260. So once we get beyond a bulk charge today, if we do with the clouds and the smoke, uh, we'll do an equalizer charge and that will help uh, equalize all them cells. It's got to be pretty much to a full charge before you do that. And then it basically kind of overcharges them and, and kind of uh, gets them to be a little more equal. Leslie called the equalizer charge. Uh, we mentioned earlier all the fire, which so the smoke cuts down on the amount of sun that we're getting. And today is a little bit of a cloudy day too. But as I go through here, I see right now we're running at about 52.9 volts on our 48 volt system, so that's pretty good. And uh, you've seen there where we have about 5.1 amps are coming into our batteries right now. And if you go over here, you'll see that we're using about 4 amps of power out the other way. And that's uh, probably got our freezer going and uh, I think the TV's going in there and uh, just whatever else might be plugged in a phone charger or something possibly uh, in the winter time you see we got a big broom right here I use this to uh, every time it snows go out there and sweep those panels off you see right now we have them laying flat on the roof uh, at the beginning of October I stand those up they're much more vertical and the snow slides off them pretty easily as long as I keep up with it also when you're charging your batteries they put off a hydrogen gas which that's why these batteries are in a box so that when they're charging lids closed this here vents those gases outside so you don't get dangerous levels in here where it could possibly explode. Uh, the other thing is, is in the winter time when uh, the days are short, uh, it's cloudy, it's snowy, 
uh, we're not getting any sunshine to charge our batteries. We have also uh, generator power that comes in and will charge the batteries for us. Uh, and with a full charge in the winter time, we get about two days worth of power. Uh, if I can get as little as about two hours of sunshine in a day, uh, we can get enough to get us through about 24 hours of usage, uh, depending on the wife's electric coffee pot. And here's a little shelter just outside the powerhouse that we built for the generator so it can stay dry and uh, when it's raining and uh, keep the snow off it in the wintertime. Uh, it's a 5,000 watt generator. Uh, generator will, um, I run it about 80% when, when this is wanting to full charge. Uh, it's a little less load on the generator, a little easier on the batteries, and uh, seems to work good for us. Uh, in the winter time, when it gets below freezing, say you know, about 20 degrees or so and, and below, especially down around zero or anything below zero, we have a couple heat lamps in here that we also have shining right at the motor and stuff of the generator because uh, once it gets cold like that, it, it draws that cold air comes in and causes some frosting and freezing in there that uh, will shut the generator down. So uh, that's one of the things we learned in the first year. Uh, we had three working generators. At the end of one day, we none of them would run, and we found out we need to have that little extra heat to, to help them when it gets below freezing. I did give up a lot of conveniences to move out here off-grid with Joe, but the one convenience I could not give up was my Starbucks barista latte maker. <laughs> and that is in the wintertime how we know how much power we have because when I get up at 5.30 in the morning and start that thing, we're either going to have a really good day or it's going to be a bad day <laughs> depending on if the power goes out or not. It's always a guessing game up here. That's what makes it so enjoyable. Well, that's our episode for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we love our, our solar power and I have to put another plug in for Backwood Solar in Sandpoint. Idaho. They are amazing. Uh, Joe does have an electri electrical background and they walked him through all the installation on the phone and they are just a great bunch of guys. So thank you to Backwood Solar. And I think next week, this time of year, it's getting before fall and we're always busy getting firewood. And so we'll take you out on a little adventure as we look for some firewood and get a load for the woodshed. So that's it. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Remember, yard by yard, life is hard. Inch by inch, life's a cinch. So I found out years ago, instead of trying to find a seven foot bar to jump over, I found a bunch of one foot bars I could step over. Okay, bye. Is it going? Yes. <laughs> oh, look. Be steady. Take it, tell me when. When? What do you mean, when? There's something else I'm supposed to talk about. <laughs> Let's see. Um, uh, the bees are going to attack me while I'm doing this. Oh. Okay. <laughs> No, stop, stop. <laughs> Should I do that? Aw, no.